Okay, this is a quick video to show you the difference between the global morphing effect or the 3D globe effect, which is found down here at the bottom under in the bottom toolbar next to the wave effect and the contour fancy fill effect and the star fill effect. Um, and so all I've done is, and the difference between that and the punch tool in the morphing effects. Okay, so I've just created two squares here and I've filled them with lace work fill, just the basic default lace work trellis so you can see the effect. You can use, with the 3D globe effect, you can use lace work, pattern fill or candle wicking. And all you do is select your object, so make sure you've got your selection handles around and come down and click on the globe, 3D globe effect tool and it will apply the tool and you can see it's distorted the stitches it's um, in the central area here the squares are larger and towards the edges they get smaller so it, it's like it's been hit with a ball it's like a tennis net hit with the ball and it's ballooned out in the middle now you can alter this effect with the reshape tool so you can come up to the reshape tool and your actual globe frame the effect frame is a circle by default. Now it has a central um, node and it has two other nodes. These nodes here are the reshape of the actual object so you can reshape both. We'll start with the globe effect, 3D globe effect, reshaping that. So first of all you can position it. So you can position it off center where the frame cuts the object, anything outside that area will remain as a standard stitch fill without any effect. So you can get this um, effect on your object of an edge and then it flattens out again. So that's interesting. The, so that's your positioning node. And I'll just put it back roughly in the center for the moment doesn't have to be because we're just playing now. Now these other two handles can reshape the object. Now you can drag it to tilt it as well. So um, you can squash it in to make it an ellipse and you can put it on an angle. So you can see here I've got this sort of effect and I can bring this one inside the square as well so that I've got this bubble effect much stronger now in the center with a flattened area around the outside. Now you can only really have an ellipse or a circle with this because that's the only alterations you can make. So you can keep it as roughly as a circle and it can be inside and you can move it around. You can, however, re then reshape the object to fit the circle, um, or you can even just make it a different shape. So if you want to fit it to the circle, of course, you'll have to change your nodes to round nodes with your space bar. And I'll need to move that start point. I'm just clicking on each node. I'll move that end point out of the way and hitting my space bar to make them round. And then I can bring that in to match the circle. Now if you want it to perfectly match the circle the easiest way is to hide the stitches and then you can make sure that your line is exactly matching. So you can make your um, globe effect shape and then match it with the original shape or you can if your original shape was a circle, I can add a node here if I need to. If your original shape was a circle, you can adjust your globe effect to fit the circle. So I've just about got it right now. That's close enough, I think, so I'll bring the stitches back. Okay, and then of course, if you take your frame back outside, it's going to change again. So you can play around. Um, in this way, when you apply the 3D globe effect, it doesn't distort the original shape unless you choose to change it, reshape it yourself. So if I undo back to the square, I 
I did play around a bit, didn't I? So I've got my square. My square, actual frame of my square, didn't change in shape by applying the globe, uh, 3D globe effect. It keeps the original shape. Now over here I've got another square exactly the same size and I'm going to select that. So I'll get my select tool and select that and I'm going to apply the punch tool. And by default it goes into the center. You've got a pink node here which you can move. Now watch the outside. My square is no longer square with the punch tool. It distorts the shape. I can increase the factor. Be careful though because it can make extra long stitches in places so it's probably a good idea to show your needle points and go out of true view so you can come in and I'll show my needle points you can actually see the length of the stitches and if you bring your grid on you can see how long those stitches are in re reference to your grid it'll give you an idea so you don't want great long stitches that are going to catch on something unless well depending on your project but generally you don't want really long stitches so Less is more with this tool, but as you saw, it did distort the actual shape of the object. So with the punch tool, it's more useful if you're creating abstract designs and you just want to play around with shapes and fills and then um, embellish them with other stitching and so forth to create some sort of abstract design. Um, it won't maintain the shape of the original object, but you can apply more than one um, punch to an object. You can only apply the 3D globe effect once to the object because if I select this object again, go back, select this one, if I come down to the 3D globe effect and click on that again, it will deselect it and the 3D globe effect will disappear. But if I select this object and I come up to my punch again, I'll get a new punch which I can move somewhere else. Um, and adjust it. So you can get some really abstract interesting things. I can add another punch. It will always add it in the center by default but then you can move it. Again your outer shape will distort with this tool. You can also add any of your other morphing tools as well. So I could, um, on top of this, I could add a swirl or a twirl, I should say. Um, and that has twisted it. And I can twist it even more. Um, I could add uh, a pinch. and you can just play around and get all sorts of interesting stitch effects but as I said be very careful of the length of your stitches it's not recommended to use these morphing tools with satin stitch um, just check in your manual there is um, a, a, a whole section on the morphing effect um, tools and you can read more about the appropriateness of your adjustments there and what stitches you can use it with.